All right, let's hop back into the swing of things, why don't we? We have ourselves a search and destroy matchup here. Game number two on the way. Corey is NP in the lobby, ready to go with the rest of the St. Clair squad. Playing a little bit cold, but at the same time, ready to make this one happen. So far, one kill apiece. We see Sauce versus Blind Slayer. Blind Slayer is doing a fantastic job in game number one. Is going to go end up getting traded out, however. So the battle continues, two on two. Priestly and Corius versus Interpreted and King Von. Corius does end up going down, which means for the defensive side of things, it's going to be all up to Priestly. King Von has that bomb in hand, ready to go in position to plant it over at the A site. And it's could well, you get nasty. Want, you would want Priestly alive in this 1v2. If it's the only player you have for Sinclair, this is the man you would want to do the job. Yep. He's a great job of finding that first kill, translating things now to a 1v1, leaves everything up to King Von. And it now puts himself in great positioning, right? But he still does have to defuse this bomb. And King Vaughn is just going to know and play that. Like, look at him. You just see him sitting here top window. The bomb is planted for him up there. King Vaughn actually does spot him. He doesn't want to take the shots yet because he doesn't need to. But King Vaughn, he has all the intel. So you're going to see him hop down a little bit. Priestly did not spot him throw up, throw up through that window. So you will see Priestly hanging around this bomb now. But, you know, no really clue. And King Vaughn will get the best of him. West Virginia going to take the first round. Take a 1-0 lead here early in the SD. I mean, smart play there from, uh, from King Von. Just took his time as much as possible. Knows eventually, just keep myself safe. The one way I instantly lose this is go hunt. Just going to take my time. Wait for him to the, get to the point where he's forced to go get that defuse. And just light him up from there. So West Virginia going to start things off on the right side of things. On the W. And now let's see if Saints can make this happen on the attack. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you will see the St. Clair Saints here. They are going to be making their way towards the B site, it looks like. Everybody kind of around there, except for Interpreted. But overall, Blind Slayer going to find early one on Brain and Priestly will not be able to get the trade for it. No Aegis will actually find Priestly as well. So now a 4v2, all left on a sauce, and the substitute Corius in here to try to pull things off it will be very difficult as they are also on the offense side of things. West Virginia, they are looking very solid in the search and destroy game on Miami so far to start things off. I mean, it was a solid job there from West Virginia. Just the fact that the Saints kind of split themselves up there 2-2 and just completely wrecked the Saints uh, one half to the point where now you have yourself the four on two, no trades. Sure, Sauce is going to find one, but there's going to be someone else ready and waiting. Outages oh. is going to take care of him nice and quick. And by the time Corius moves, it does not matter. His location's known. He's hunted down. West Virginia, 2-0. Yeah, and you know, Sauce, he almost found that second kill there. So so good stuff there from Sauce that, you know, at least make an effort. But Corius, as soon as he tries to move, like you said, gets mowed down and shut down. So that's an early 2-0 lead for West Virginia. St. Clair, they really need to take a round here and not let West Virginia start to kind of pull away from things, right? That's one of the big things for St. Clair here now is to, you know, just make sure that they can hold things down and just keep things all right here moving forward. They do not want to allow West Virginia to take a third round here and make a 3-0 lead here early in this game. I'm going to be watching up in this stairwell. For whatever reason, this house right here always seems to have a bloodbath of some sort. And outages and blind slayer are going to be walking right into Sauce and Brandon. How will this exchange go? It's going to actually be the reverse this time. Brandon showing up to play, getting himself a nice solid double. Cleaning things up. Now the tables have turned. Interpreted and King Von. They bombed down. 2v4 and the bomb's already down. Priestly finds one more. Where is the king? He is going to hang on tight for just a little bit longer here. Does take down Sauce, but he is going to get shot down. Saints on a solid defense. Yeah, that was a very quick round in St. Clair. They really just did a great job of mowing down everybody in their path. Like, right here was a great job, because look at this. They get that player down, and that is bombed down right away. So that means that, you know, West Virginia, they're forced to play around St. Clair, and St. Clair just doing a great job getting around on the board and not allowing West Virginia to really kind of pull away with this game too, too early. Corius off to a little bit of a slow start, but we should see him kind of pick things up here soon. And I mean, on the defensive side of things, it does look like he's been basically taking Lavelle's spot, which has been basically being the solo defender up on the A side. And then even on the attacking side of things, he's the only one who really goes towards the middle at all. Tries to kind of call things out. Is there anybody crossing? Are they going to actually make a play towards A or not? 
bunch of different opportunities here. Brandon's going to find one. Sauce is not going to drop the king, so there's going to be another rough situation ahead for West Virginia University. In fact, Priestley might be able to find number three here. Maybe even four if Bonsire lines on up. There's one. Can he find the last one? He's getting the hit markers. He just needs the finishing blow. Long range pistol shot, not quite going to find it, but Brandon is on hot pursuit as well. Interpret his life is not long for this world. He shall be mowed down, and Saint's going to tie this back up. Beautiful stuff there from St. Clair to take the 2-0 lead that was once West Virginia's and now turning it to a tie game, 2-2. Two two. Great stuff there from St. Clair, like I was saying, right? And overall, just, you know, great gameplay from them. They're doing, they're winning these rounds dominantly. Like, they're doing a very, very good job throughout here. St. Clair will be heading back on to the defense side of things where I think they do look a little bit more comfortable. And now I will see if St. Clair can translate this to yet another round win and string three in a row and take their first lead of this game. Will be really interesting to see nonetheless. And overall, you will see all these resources dedicated kind of towards the B site once again. And you will see Corius kind of head out towards that A site, playing the defense, playing Corius's positions like you were saying. And he's doing a fairly decent job of it. Yes, he might be 0-2, but he's only died out of two of these four rounds. That is one thing that is good to see. You got to look at the positives here. So overall, St. Clair now tie game and the sauce in a great position to try to find Blaine Slayer. It's right around the corner. He's peeking. He's trying to see if there's anybody taking a look. But considering the past couple of rounds, you know there's got to be somebody on the Saints ready and waiting here. But that's actually going to be a solid uh, frag to start things off here with interpreted finding Priestley. So player advantage so far in favor of West Virginia, and considering they took care of most of this midsection, they can make the roam over to A. Nice and clean. Blind, Sl Blind Slayer going to make his way over. Corius is nearby. But does he spot it? He does spot the one person, but just going to get a couple tags, but not enough to actually slow things down. Diffuser getting planted. It is going to be down. So Saints got to move, oh, but they're oh. getting some frags. 2v2. So all of the outages and interpreted. Brandon and Corius now going to be the ones to close this one out. 35 seconds on the clock. Brandon finds one. All on to interpreted. Brandon and Corius. They are going hunted. Can Corius make an impact on this game here? He hasn't be able, been able to do a whole lot yet. But overall, interpreted. Just hanging around this top window spot. He spots Corius. He spots Brandon. That's going to be some tags, but he doesn't clean up the kill. Good stuff there from them. Will find Brandon. Corius on the defuse. He's running. Will not find it. He has to find the kill. Corius finds it. And he has time. Corius will clutch up the round. The substitute will win St. Clair their third round on the board and put them up three in a row. What a kill to be your first one of the game to clutch up a round like that. That's one of those kind of situations where you're probably popping out of your seat and you're screaming at your teammates in the best possible way, if you know what I mean. Popping off and firing off let's goes and whatnot, because that is exactly what you like to see. Beautifully done there from Corius to clean up. Got the information after Brandon went down and was able to finish the job. Beautifully done. Yeah, a hundred percent there, and you know you will see Brandon here. He's having a great, great game so far. Currently sitting at seven and three. Saint Clair going to be back on the offense, and if they can find a round one here, that's going to build them a good cushion moving forward against this West Virginia squad. But it will be a little tough now that they are on the offense side of things, and you will see West Virginia dedicate some resources towards mid, dedicate one towards these boats on A. And overall, I mean, if Saint Clair just four hits this B site, they only have to deal with two players, and they could be in a fairly good positioning. See Sauce taking a peek. As right now, he's not going to see anything for the second anyway. Does spot outages. Gets his position known. Blind Slayer going to take care of Brandon up in that uh, up in that room to the top. And now the two-on-one against Sauce. This is a rough spot for the bomb to be in. He does go down. Corius going to find one. Priestley finds another. This did turn into a 2v2 for just a second. But now it's going to be all up to Corius once again to try and take Blind Slayer and King Vaughn with the bomb down. He does pick it up, but can he close this out? Yeah, the players are up there now. He does spot King Vaughn, but King Vaughn will get the best of them. Tie game on her hands, 3-3. Three, three. And you know, this whole series so far, Dinners, it's been looking neck and neck, and I am having a phenomenal time casting this game and bringing this content to you guys, whether it be just a such a close series coming down to the wire, search and destroy 3-3 three, three right now, who will be able to regain the lead? Definitely a rough spot there for Corius to be in, but it's keeping us in an exciting series, which you know, as much as I love watching our team constantly win, what I love more is just 
some damn good esports and good matches. And as of right now, West Virginia, the hard point was pretty solid, but this search and destroy is looking so much better. But we're going to have to see how this next round goes down. Priestley going to find himself a nice quick kill, but he's got to watch out and interpret it. It is around the corner for the refrag. And literally, these first couple seconds just make or break games, it feels like here. Make or break rounds, rather. We see Brandon right up. Oh, Blind Slayer so and a few help. others. He's got. If he does go down, he's going to be able to at least spot oh. out everybody. But he's going to be able to get away with his life. That's huge. Yeah, and um, Blind Slayer will not be able to find Sauce there. So all left on to interpret one v four. Priestly going to shut him down. Flawless Clean. round coming out there from Saint Clair. Four v three. No, sorry, four to three now. Here as they, you know, Saint Clair, they will take a lead and they are one step closer to closing out this game. Of course, first the six will get the victory here in game number two. Saints, of course, like you're saying, two more to get themselves there. There is no overtime rule, so whoever gets to six, even if it is just like five to six, that will still be the victor. And as of right now, I'm trying to think about it, I think Saints have themselves a defensive position. But a wise man once said that defensive, there is, of course, the defensive advantage. Saints have the advantage and then consistently lose on defense. So we'll have to see if that ends up coming into play later on down the road. But Brandon giving the Saints a solid start here with Priestley. Two quick kills. Yeah, I may or may not be that wise man. But <laughs> overall, King Vaughn is the last man alive in a 1v4 here with St. Clair on the offense. St. Clair really looking to put themselves at the match point. However, King Vaughn will find Priestley, puts himself in a 1v3 now. This bomb is being planted on B, however. I think he will have time to get this plant. King Vaughn will get tapped down a little bit. But overall, I mean, he has so much work to do. 40 seconds, he has to defuse the bomb and find three kills. I really just do not see this one happen. Oh, he damn well tried, but he is going to end up going down, and that's going to put Saints on game point. One more to go to get them the victory here on this Miami Search and Destroy. Of course, a map that this season across uh, CCL and now into the Active Blizz League. This is just one of those maps and map types that we've seen Saints just play to death, and for good reason. Quite solid at it, and looking so far so good. One more time around for the victory. Yeah, exactly. So St. Clair, you know, they only need one more round, like you were saying, or West Virginia, they need three. So overall, as long as St. Clair can win one of these next three rounds, they will be taking this game here. And that's fairly good odds if you're St. Clair. You really, you know, that was a big round for West Virginia. The difference between a, like a four to three lead and a five to three lead, very, very different. So overall for St. Clair, to be able to have this now up 5-3. Gonna be good as Priestley and Sauce find opening kills. And, you know, Sauce will make his way out here with his life. All left on to Blind Slayer and King Vaughn. So, so much work for them to do. And St. Clair is in beautiful position here to try to take map oh. two. Big, big pick there from Corius. Now it means it's going to be the one on four with the bomb down. King Vaughn with basically the impossible task. Has to go like full Ghost Recon on this one if he wants to try and clean this one up. And I mean, if your teammate's going to just blow you up with kill streaks, I mean, that's a solid start. But he is going to be going down in the end. St. Clair going to clean up game number two. Going up 2 0 in the series. Match point right around the corner when it comes to control. Yeah, Priestley was just having some fun, I guess. So, <laughs> overall, though, St. Clair, they will take this one. 6-3, and overall, 2-0 in the series. Now, one step closer from closing this one out. One map to go is all they need. However, now West Virginia, they're going to have to do so, so much work. Now, with the reverse sweep. And one thing I do really like to see is Corey is coming in here. He goes 3-3, three and three and he holds his own. He does a good job, and playing that... You know, filling in for Dawson's re re role. And overall, they do take a map win there and are putting themselves up 2 0 in the series. Really good stuff. And we head right back to raid now as we go for the control. I mean, this is again another one of those maps that the Saints have absolutely played to death so far in this season. And I like their chances moving forward. Going to do a very quick uh, lobby switch here, it looks like. So just going to be a couple moments before we hop into game number three. <laughs> it was kind of funny seeing the. Uh, the team killed there with the kill streak. I mean, I know in other games, I'd accidentally kill your team testing a little recoil. But do you have to test a recoil of a <laughs> of a sky attack or from a from an airdrop, whatever you want to call that thing? 
I feel yeah, like nothing not. like Big Papa getting tapped in the head. <laughs> but overall, so yeah, I mean, good stuff there for St. Clair. You know, take up a 2-0 lead. They're one step closer to closing this one out. And, you know, out of the next three maps, they only need to find one, which is very, very good for St. Clair. I mean, that puts yourself in beautiful positioning moving forward. And West Virginia, they're going to have to pull off a reverse sweep. That is a very, very tall task to do. Because if you look at things, right, St. Clair won a hard point and they won the S&D. So now they're going to go control. Yes. If, what if they lose the control? Okay. St. Clair, they're not going to be too worried because they go back on two game modes that they already won. And they won the hard point. Kind of, I, I'm going to say shorthanded because Dawson was lagging. So overall, if you're St. Clair, you're not stressed. You are like, all right, we got a 2-0 lead. This is exactly what we want moving forward. We're heading back on the raid, a map that we like. And St. Clair has the host on the remaining three maps. So they will have the connection that they want. You know, you can only assume it's going to be, you know, maybe like Priestley, Brandon, or Sauce hosting one of those players that has the capability of absolutely just slaying out, heading amazing bullet rag, and just going absolutely ham. So St. Clair looking ahead now onto raid control. Very, very excited to see how things play out. Hmm. You're also mentioning how even if game three doesn't necessarily go into the Saints' favor, there is always the fact that, of course, they won on the other two game modes. And these other two game modes, of course, is Checkmate Hardpoint, which, again, played it to death during CCL. And then uh, Raid again for Search and Destroy. I mean, how many times are we going to see Raid and Saints so far in this season? I mean, at this point, it just seems like, for the most part, we have ourselves... Uh, the guaranteed Saints lineup seems to be like a raid with Miami with one thing of checkpoint or checkmate. That seems to be the mixture I see for from them most often than not. So this veto, this map selection that happens prior to the maps happening, I think Saints just straight up won. And it really is helping their confidence going into these next couple games completely agree and you know if you are wvu or other schools that are looking to get a little bit of an edge on st Clair, i think one of the big things that you can do is go back watch our vods and see what maps they're picking what maps they're playing to death like you have been saying and you know really just gather some intel saying hey ban this hey protect this do this vote this it really helps my camera is gone now but you know <laughs> oh, what no. i'm saying nonetheless overall a big thing comes down to picking maps like it can make or break games and for st Clair, you know win the vetoes like you were saying gives them a huge edge here moving forward i mean we see it in other titles i mean csgo obviously same idea but even something like say league of legends which i know league of legends not a shooter what are you talking about but you can win or lose a game just by selecting your character and you in this you're just winning or losing or not necessarily winning or losing but you're giving yourself a much better opportunity if you do some homework a little bit ahead of time. Like you were saying, figure out the maps that it seems like the Saints seem to go on very, very often. You can give yourself the edge. Like, imagine if you picked Moscow. Like, we haven't seen Moscow in ages. If you pick Garrison or something, however, then okay. I mean, we've played that quite a bit too, but it depends on the, the map choice. And I do think, actually, the uh, one of the Garrison modes actually is getting GA'd in the future, if not already. So It already is. So, the search and destroy, we actually... I believe. Yes, we actually do have two new maps in the rotation, which is very interesting. Express from Black Ops 2, just like Ray, in the rotation for teams to pick. It's up for grabs. Like You can play it now. And overall, that is going to be for Search and Destroy. And you also do see Apocalypse. Apocalypse being a new map that has been added in. And overall, it can be played for the hard points. So very good, interesting to see if we do see those come up and arise soon. Like my call, it's maybe a little shaky on them. But overall, I mean, I would really be interested to see, you know, one of these new maps that comes out in the middle of the season come actually through and be developed and played out. And it is extremely weird, too, because oftentimes you'll see in a lot of other um, competitive esports scenes, like a new map comes out or a new character comes out. It's like, OK, we're either um banning it until the next season or we're waiting two weeks so you get to play on it <laughs> ccl and uh active blizzard collegiate nope it's legal go for it by all means give it a shot and it can be extremely messy in that regard i mean hearthstone does the same thing too with uh brand new packs we embrace the chaos and let's just go for it and i mean at the same time as competitive players in that situation patch comes out you grind that patch as quick as possible i know some some students may have lighter schedules than others and they may take advantage of that situation but it is interesting how leagues 
majority of the time seem to be embracing the chaos instead of taking the uh i guess the r6 route that i keep thinking of in my head where you hold for two weeks or something like that mm -hmm. but it does make it quite exciting for the spectator side of things yes for sure so i'm really excited to actually see you know um the second map this third map gets started sorry and the raid control you know st Clair, they've looked fairly decent on this raid control right like they've been doing a very good job of controlling the game controlling the tempo and i believe it's one of their more confident maps and modes um they've been playing you know like playing it like crazy like almost every time they play control i don't know if i've ever seen them really play something other than raid control in the past like two months Absolutely, and that's another thing too, especially since Control in general seems like it's one of the Saints' like less comfortable modes, but they get to play it on a map that they're extremely comfortable with. So it kind of uh, negates any sort of negativity that they would have initially had for picking that game mode. But without further ado, I think we're ready to hop into the game. Why don't we? Of course, Saints on the left... West Virginia on the right. Let's get into the action. West Virginia fighting for their life here in this Activision Blizzard season. And it's match point, St. Clair's favor. Yeah, so you will see St. Clair actually on the offense side of things here this time around. And Corius looking to find an early kill right away, but will not be able to do so. And you see some two for two trades, three for three trades go down right away. Very even matchup so far. It's been the storybook of this matchup so far. St. Clair, will Sauce be able to find both? No, he doesn't. He will get shut down from Blind Slayer. But overall, for St. Clair, I mean, like, a decent start. They do have the two live advantage. They do see he have someone on this B point now. And, you know, he will run right through it. And he actually will just be hanging around here. It's going to be Sauce playing a very big impact on this game already. And they're really going to have to do a lot to shut him down soon. As you see, Cordy is there with him now. And this B site is ticking fairly fast. You're already almost at the two tick marker. Brandon, he's going to be just wrapping around, trying to find more of these kills, and he's going to put himself in great position. Oh my god, Sauce! Oh. Go find two. Brandon finds two. And now look at this. St. Clair fully dominating these points. Two on B. Sorry, two on A, one on B. B has had a half a tick to go. A, they already got a tick on that. So, I mean, St. Clair, you're in beautiful positioning. If they can clean up this one, that's going to give them so much more time. About two minutes here now. And they already have a point on A, and they do have a three live advantage. Great stuff from St. Clair so far to start this control game off. Gosh, the fact that the Saints were able to even get themselves that single tick on the A point just completely drew away any of the reinforcements that were planning on coming for B, allowed for Brandon to just clean up nice and quick by himself, get all the points, and then Sauce with that double earlier in that um, that situation as well, just to clean that point up was absolutely disgusting. Made it nice and easy for Saints to get at least the first part, but now, of course, minute left for them to take care of this A point. Getting B means nothing if you can't get them both. So Saints still need to get onto that point. Sure, one-third is down. It's a good start, but you still got a long way to go. Yeah, they are doing a fairly good job in the lives department, right? Up by three, and they do still have a minute. So a minute is still a good chunk of time in control. They do find themselves another wow. kill. Oh my god, Sauce. That is the second double of the game that has made a huge impact. And this there should allow St. Clair to four stack A, and it should tick like crazy. Look how far West Virginia has to rotate over. And look at this. They're already at the second tick now. 52 seconds. The time is still up. Sauce going to find yet another kill. The lives, so much in St. Clair's favor. Are they going to clean that one up? And that is an offense win. Huge for St. Clair, up 1-0 early in this raid control. MVP for the round, at least in my opinion, goes to Sauce as both for of sure. his multi-kills come in at the clutch moment to just let the Saints all blitz as like three or four onto the point, get in position, and then just basically be a spraying field at that point moving forward. West Virginia could not do anything. They might pick out one or two, but you cannot clean up the point with just one or two. So beautifully done there for the Saints. They're going to be on the defensive side of things this time. Let's see how they do. Yeah, and you know, the defensive side of things, they're probably pretty comfortable too, like, and you know, overall, throughout this game, at the very beginning when Control first came out, I would repeatedly say defense has such an advantage. But on Raid, it's one of those maps where, you know, offense can actually kind of get a good kind of thing going. So overall, you will see St. Clair, though, they will be able to try their best to play defense. And Brandon, great double there. He will get cleaned up from outages, but overall, I mean, the lives in favor for St. Clair once again. And they're really stopping West Virginia from getting any early kicks. Priestley is just playing mind games with them around this statue. And overall, good that drops them from there, from West Virginia, to allow them to hop on this B point. They have two people on it, three people on it. This B point should go their way fairly soon. 
It was good with them. At least Priestley was able to kind of slow them down for just a second. But otherwise, solid job here from West Virginia. Able to get themselves two ticks guaranteed at the very worst. But Priestley, of course, not done yet. He does also have Brandon around the corner. Does end up going down. Who's coming up next? Saucinado is the next one alive. There's only one other player here on the side of West Virginia. And they are going to be able to stop it. Sauce right in time. Going to keep that B point from going down. It looks like the West Virginia going to keep throwing themselves at the, this B point. They want to finish this off. Yeah, great job there from St. Clair, but blind player goes huge, finds a 2k, and now that's going to be 21-21 with the lives. Brandon, going to put things a little bit more in their favor, but out is just able to answer right back on the sauce. Overall, very close game here, and this B point is now captured from West Virginia, now going to be everything devoted to A. They have a minute 40, so tons of time to work with, tons of lives to work with, but overall, St. Clair, they are going to, you know, try to just extend that lives advantage for them, and just kind of play up those lives. Corey is doing a great job of that, playing that little cheeky window spot. And now St. Clair just looking to play their defense. The one big thing that is different from this past round with St. Clair on the offense is West Virginia doesn't have a tick on A. So overall, it does provide St. Clair some more time to have to break the site if need be. And they are just mowing down West Virginia right now, stopping them in their tracks. They have a six live advantage and Priestley's hanging around on that A point. They have no progress made whatsoever. No one's even close to A point. And this time is starting to become a little bit of the essence. Yeah, minute left, of course, and I mean, we see West Virginia kind of taking the scenic route here, trying to find themselves a different flank, and as of right now, seems to be a little bit successful. They do find themselves two kills, but these spawns on the side of St. Clair are actually making it so that they are stupid close to that A point. Makes things nice and comfortable, even if they do end up going down. Two going down, and a oh nice little God. double line them up there for Brandon. Going to take care of two more, and now live Saints with double. This is looking brutal for St. Clair's favor. Yeah, exactly. Like St. Clair, I really just do not see a position now where St. Clair loses this control. Half a, half a minute on the clock. They have no progress made on A. St. Clair's doubling the lives. And overall, I mean, West Virginia, they have one respawn until they're on their last lives. No respawns remaining now. And now look at that. They only have three players. They're in a 3v12, essentially. Going to be very, very nearly impossible for West Virginia. St. Clair looking to take this control up 2-0. And that puts them in beautiful positioning. And now just going to try his damnedest the last one alive. Only a couple of seconds left on the clock either. He's going to go down swinging. And to be honest, he does do a pretty good job. But he is not going to be able to get the actual objective completed. Saints going to take this second round. Putting match point back. Threatening here with uh, or threatening the uh, West Virginia squad. One more round win away. You see this uh, solid play of the game here. That's going to be Brandon's triple to help clean up that A point. But B Saints point. looking, or B point rather, and just nicely done nonetheless. Well, Brand, you know, like you said, the MVP of that first round is going to be Sauce. MVP of that round, Brandon. He shut down that flank, found a double there, found that triple on B, like you were saying, in the best play of the game. Overall, made a few big plays to make an impact. And if you look at the three starters for St. Clair, currently seeing 15 and 8, 15 11, 16 11, they're having phenomenal games to start things off. And they're just going to carry it around, carry it around into this one. They are already on two people on A. They're already about to get a tick on that A point. And there it is. Like, look at this. St. Clair, they are playing phenomenal throughout this game so far basically uncontested at this rate here too about halfway but the reinforcements have arrived here from west virginia university they're going to be able to knock this back down to the first third of course but still it, getting that off of the first initial pu uh, push of the game definitely rather valuable that being said though west virginia coming in hot here king vaughn i thought he was gonna get turned yeah. on here for a second there i was a little nervous there for him but he does end up cleaning it up nonetheless and if there's one thing, sure, Saints got that first tick, but otherwise, the frags have been all in West Virginia favored. For sure. So, St. Clair, they are down four lives. However, you know, they are doing a pretty good job of hanging around this A point. Corius and Priestley both on it now. And now look at St. Clair. They, it looks like almost West Virginia just gave up on A. So, overall, St. Clair should have no worries here. Corius is going to spot this player. He's going to get him. He's going to get a little bit of a beat down there. That's going to even up the lives a little bit. Now, three different, or sorry, only two differential. And St. Clair, they do have more time on the clock. They have the A point secured. Now, we're just going to see him try to head over to this B side of things and see what they can do over here. Overall, let's see what Brandon can do on this entry frag. He may be hopping through this window. I don't suggest that his outages does have such an upper hand on that gunfight. Interpreted and outages open things up well. For live advantage now for West Virginia. St. Clair, they have no progression on B. West Virginia has been playing this one quite well, but Corius gonna find two in the middle of the map. 
Absolutely huge value coming out here from Corius. Nicely done there, but the Saints still have to worry about getting over to that B side. But some of those spawns that just happened for this side of West Virginia, all the way on to where the A spawn was, or the A, uh, the A point was. So Saints going to be able to move on forward. Saw's going to break in, but he is going to go down. But there is some reinforcements right around the corner. Brandon finds one, takes to the water to move on forward, and cleans up the point, but just got to watch out for the West Virginia University players coming through the middle. They get spotted. There goes outages. Blind Slayer takes care of Sask. He knows Brandon's around, but he does wait for the rest of his team to show up as well, which means it's all up to Brandon, who's currently capturing this, actually. He does find interpreted. Corey has found himself a double in all that as well, and that could be it if they can get themselves in a solid defensive position. Yeah, you know, they're only a half a tick away, and Brandon has been doing a great job hanging around here. They're going to be making Done. away the St. Clair College. Good to three over the control. This is exactly what we were talking about, Tanners. They may not be so comfortable in control, but they look phenomenal on raid. Like, I, if you were an enemy team, I would not let St. Clair have raid at all. Oh, that double was actually a perfect lineup there from Curious up in the top there. That extra little double, of course, has made it so much easier for Brandon to get himself in there. For a while there, it seemed like he was the only one on point as well, but I guess Sassanado was right there for backup as well. Best case scenario, solid attack for St. Clair, and they're going to be able to clean this series up in 3-0 fashion, finishing this up before we even get to, uh, in, to, to checkmate. So, <laughs> solid job from them. Everybody looked solid, and... All the calls looked good. I'm just extremely happy with how our Saints played here today. Yeah, me too. I'm very, very happy with how St. Hilaire played. They look very good. You know, first map, let's take this a rundown throughout the whole series, right? Lavelle, first map, legs, they win. Just good stuff there. They pick up St. Lavelle's weight a little bit. Lavelle, he switches his role a little bit. He plays hardpoint a little bit more. He plays anchor a little bit more, and he plays it perfectly, right? That's going to result in a win there for St. Clair. A very close one, but... At the end of the day, a win's a win. Now you can move to the search and destroy. You know, West Virginia, they take an early 2-0 lead in the search and destroy. Makes things a little concerning here for St. Clair moving forward, right? But overall, they bounce back with three rounds right away. They take a lead, and then they just go on an absolute run. They win that one 6-3. St. Clair takes the search and destroy. They're up 2-0 in the series, moving to control, and they just played the best control that I might have ever seen St. Clair play. Everyone's played their roles perfectly. Corius on that last round when he was sitting top window, just watching that whole B site, making sure that nobody could enter in there to clean up Brandon or clean up Sauce, whatever it may be. Great stuff there from him. Overall, Sinclair playing a very good series. I like to see Corius, the substitute, come out here, play his best, and it results in them not even dropping a map. So great stuff there from Sinclair. Very happy with that 3-0 win here in the Active Blizzard League. I know he had me a little bit nervous after the first couple of rounds of Search and Destroy when um, West Virginia University went up 2-0 initially, and he was down 0-2. But then he got his very first elimination from getting subbed in as the clutch finisher of, I believe, round three. And there's nothing like a clutch like that to just absolutely inject you with momentum, sort of speak, and let alone it to be a clutch as well. He just... That's a double dose, man. You're you're absolutely high on adrenaline at that point there, and Corius did not let off. Was just slaying it up with the rest of the Saints as well. Of course, everybody just did exactly what they needed to do. Even shoutouts, of course, to Lavelle as well. Given the situation, seeing that he was lagged up, okay, I'm not going to be a sharpshooter today. What can I do objectively? Was able to still get the job done, and then I'm thankful that he did not keep himself in. Like, yeah, that's a you big have people thing, like for a reason and he used it and did not let pride get in the way that's a big thing like i want to touch on as well you know letting pride get in the way you do see it with a lot of these other teams right you know maybe letting something get in the way and saying oh we don't need our substitutes i'm fine well we're, we're gonna take this one we're good we're good we're good but no you have substitutes for a reason corius is a highly trained player highly skilled player he scrims he plays he's very competitive in this game as well there goes my camera but overall <laughs> st Clair. Good job. They 3 0 the series. A very good matchup. And I'm just going to give one more quick shout out to our sponsors. Would not be possible without them. So thank you to the St. Clair College Alumni Association, PC Outlet, Zeckelman School of Business and Information Technology, St. Clair College, Tim Hortons, and the St. Clair SRC. We would not be able to do it without you guys. So we really do appreciate helping out the production side of things. And you guys, the viewers, we appreciate all you guys coming and tuning in here. We love putting on a show for you guys. Some great COD. You know, even though this was a 3-0 series, the first map or two was very, very close maps and really good content to bring you guys. So 
overall, we really enjoyed the casting this one, really had some fun, and I'm really looking forward to see them play in this active Blizzard League moving forward. Absolutely, of course. You'll be able to catch this league every Saturday at 7 as long as there is no reschedules. But one thing that I'm personally going to be looking forward to is the fact that they finally get themselves a W here after a very, very strugglesome week or two in um, in Activ Activision Blizzard Collegiate Cold War as well as the CCL. They went up against a bunch of hard teams and they were just coming up short over and over and over again for the Saints to finally find themselves a W here up against West Virginia. It's a nice change of pace, I'm sure, yeah, to finally yeah. break the streak, and now we can go into the doubleheader on Tuesday. Like, full confidence, ready to go. We're probably going to have some tough matchups once again, but then, like, you know you can do it. So it's for good sure. to see the streak broken. For sure, and you know, there isn't a whole lot left to talk about here from the production side of things. Great content overall, great game, good St. Clair win. We love to see all you guys in here watching the game. So thank you so much for all tuning in. My name is Jackson Deprive Brown, whether you can't see me, and I'm joined alongside Dan Banner. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will catch you all later on the next one. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to follow us here on the Saints Gaming CA Twitch channel. Of course, your home for all things St. Clair Saints Varsity Esports. And we do have many matches coming up in just the next couple of days, actually. Be sure to join us tomorrow. The season finale of the Face It CSGO Contenders League is going to be taking place. That CSGO team, I know, is, is absolutely itching for a win as well. Hopefully, they can end the season off strong and keep their playoff hopes alive. That's the one you're going to definitely want to be keeping an eye on. Then Monday, 7 o'clock, we do have NECC Overwatch action. Then Tuesday, we have ourselves a bit of a triple header. Starting things off with NECC Rocket League action. The Rocket League team coming off of a hot victory and play versus. Ready to keep that momentum going, of course. And of course, now at Tuesday at 8 o'clock and then 9.30. This is going to be the CCL this time by or Call of Duty Cold War double header, 8 o'clock, then 9.30. Double the action here for Call of Duty on Tuesday. It's going to be a busy Tuesday. But it's also going to be a busy Wednesday as well. Of course, play versus Fortnite trios action. 10 matches minimum, or 10 matches maximum on the board. Three hours of Fortnite action. Constant back-to-back -back matches. Going to be an exciting night there as well. And there's still plenty, plenty more to come as well. So make sure you are following so you catch all of the action live. And follow our Twitter, of course, Saints Gaming CA. Make sure you catch all the news, all the results, as well as any player or event information that does come up in the future. One final thing I want to quickly shout out as well as, of course, our merch store that is currently up and running but more and more things are going to be coming up very shortly you may oftentimes see me wearing that jacket on the far left maybe that sweater or you want a jersey or a mask or maybe even some more items in the future of course check out acquire.ca slash saints to make sure you're repping your saints gear in true fashion but with that we will close out tonight 